Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. Hi guys and welcome to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast, a weekly show about all things Port Adelaide Footy Club. I'm your host, Mac 19 and joining me as always, we've got co-host Fishing Rick. How are you, buddy? Great. What about you, mate? Very good. What good a great work. weekend. Should I just quickly mention that we've got that um, competition for the two locker room tickets up for grabs? You sure can, mate. Yeah, so it. check it out. I'll put, on the, I'll put it in the thread for this podcast and the last one. What you have to do, just like the, the New Vision Facebook page and share it and... Uh, Go in a draw for uh, two locker room tickets for this weekend's massive clash against Sydney. Too Johnny easy. Ripper. That's it. And first time on the podcast, we've got Nivek Forty Eight. How are you, mate? Yeah, g'day. I'm good. How are you? how are we all? Very good. Very good. Even though it was a sad weekend for Port Adelaide, still in a good mood. Yeah, it wasn't good, was it? Oh well. These things happen. <laughs> <laughs> Chin up, boys. That's it. That's it. Chin up. Now, your first time on the podcast, mate. Uh, do you want to give us a bit of a, a port background and how you came to support Port Adelaide? Uh, I can do that, yep. Um, my dad was actually a South supporter and my mum was a Sturt supporter, but we lived down the port well, when I was born. They lived with my dad's parents who were, who were into football. My grandma was very much into port, so... Uh, my dad had to take us all to the football because Alberton was near where we lived. We went there and eventually my dad was converted and, and I just sort of stuck with Port and loved it. Fantastic. What about your favourite match? Um, thinking back, I, my first grand final I went to was 66 and I saw him lose a stack before 77. So I love that one. As Russell Ebert said, geez, it's been a bloody long time, but it's worth it. <laughs> That's it. I love that. I love that one. Bruce Bruce Light was my favourite player growing up. Fantastic. Big Brucey Light. Yeah. I never got to see him play, unfortunately. He's probably the one player, um, along with Russell Ebert, that I never really got to see play. Um, who I would have really loved to have seen play live. Yeah. No, he was. He was good. Tough, tough, and skillful. All right. Well, let's get into our love and hate, which is one thing we loved, one thing we hated about Port Adelaide this week. Rick, mate. Start with you. No, uh, well, I hate the fact that our club's got suffering from bloody, um, you know, a raft of vagina um, meninge cockle. It's bloody horrendous. What the hell's going on there? What's happening at the club? A raft of what? Hey, <laughs> is that what I read? Uh, yeah, it could be. It could well be. It's gone. It's gone viral. Is that, viral, is that not right? Is it? I never know what's going on with your iPhone, mate, so who knows? <laughs> I think it's that predictor text again. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what they're sharing down there, but keep it separate, will you? It's not good. No, but I hate the fact that uh, the boys are seriously not well and it's, uh, it's never a good time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it obviously uh, affected a few of the players that did play on the weekend and it sort of, uh, it sort of ran our team down a little bit. So we, we don't know really if that was the real fit Port Adelaide coming out of the break, which was the question I wanted answered. And now we have to yes, wait for another week. not good. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not good for Johnny Butch. Um, you know, you don't want to get uh, something like that. It can really knock you around quite heavily and, and for quite a long time as well. So it could well be season over for, for Butcher. Um, and Redden. And Jared, well, it was already season over for Redden, but you know, the guy just can't take a trick. No. He belongs in a bubble. Absolutely not. It's very unfortunate because we, we desperately need him out there. It is. If I was to be, if I was to be serious, though, uh, I guess my hate would be that I feel like we're playing... Um, at the moment, our game style, I feel like we're playing not to lose, and that's why we're losing by small margins uh, rather than playing the game trying to win, if that makes sense. Certainly does. Yeah. I agree 100%. Yeah. What yeah. about your love? Uh, my love is the fact that all their competitors... Um, don't want to take advantage of us losing. And so for all the doom and gloom, we're only one game behind Frio and two behind Sydney, Hawthorne and Geelong. Now, if you offered me that at this stage of the season, 
uh, at, before the season started, I would have gone, yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. So, and two games clear of uh, six, you know, we're, we're still in a very good position. So it's not the end of the world, even though we feel like it is at this point in time. Well, good attitude. I like it. Now, Nivek, what about you, mate? What's your love and hate? Uh, I'll start with hate. It goes along with what Rick said. I was just thinking about poor, like, Jerry Redden. What's he done? Has he kicked a black cat, fell under a ladder? He's had such bad luck. Very unfortunate. With, with injuries. And now he's got this, what did he call it? Viral meningococcal. Meningitis. <laughs> meningitis. Yeah. My, my yeah, love. What about your love? My love. Um, I, was, I went, to Mel- oh, I'm not, went to Melbourne. I'm still there. Um, uh, to the Fed Square and the march and all that. It's really good how all the supporters get together. They estimated about 3,000. I don't know if that's right or not, but it was pretty cool. Okay. Walk, walking down the uh, river there and chanting and carrying on and all these people looking at us thinking, what the hell are these guys doing? <laughs> well, it's a bi-weekly event now in Adelaide. That's right. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, but I was, I, was, I was surprised at how big it was in Melbourne too. It was, it was huge. So how many supporters do you guys think were at the ground for, from Port Adelaide's perspective? I'd say about oh, seven thousand. I'd say. Three. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say to about you know, at least five, probably more. But yeah, it was just a bit, bit of a strange atmosphere. Maybe because they yeah. were all expecting to lose this week. That's why. Well, yeah, it could be. Could be. Maybe they thought their season was over, and you know, luckily for them, I guess they're uh, they're back in. But uh, the, I guess the first thing before we go straight to the review, mate, um, we had our uh, tough question segment. Um, this time last week, um, and you said you'd wait to, until after the Collingwood game to see if we've uh, if we've peaked or not. What do yes. you reckon now? Oh, Macca, as I said in my uh, intro, there it's a bit. I feel like it's it's a bit hard to almost gauge. I feel like if I was to be blunt, I'd say I reckon we're cooked. Right? I reckon yep. we're fried. And uh, and look, I can see reasons for it. The hard training through the pre-season and now with the young bodies and it's catching up. Um, but even some of our more mature bodies uh, look to be uh, still suffering as well. So, you know, you can't really just isolate it to the young ones. Um, but then part of me thinks, well, you know, how many people are crook? So uh, how, how much has that distorted uh, the game plan from the weekend, you know, because they, they were struggling. So obviously Robbie Gray wasn't fit. Um you know, so uh, I don't know. But, yeah, I, if I was just to answer simple, I would just say that, yeah, look, I think we're cooked and we're going to be struggling. If we serve that up against Sydney, we're going to get annihilated. Well, look, my love and hate this week, uh, my love was Hammer hitting fantastic form. Um, you know, if, if only he could do that 14 or 15 times a year instead of sort of the four or five times that we get to see it, he would be an absolute superstar and just about the best player in our team, to be in, in all honesty. Um, just mm. his ability to win lots of the ball and kick those great goals, which he puts together a few times a year, uh, just sensational. Just want to see more of it. We, we should we should have lined him up and handballed it to him in the last quarter, and he could have kicked a few. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And look, my hate this week. Uh, it's going to be on field again. It's got to be the pitiful display from the midfield yesterday. We were just schooled by a team mm. that is pretty well the worst stoppage midfield in the league this year. They're they're pretty well bottom or, or bottom two or three in, in, in all those sort of categories like contested possessions, um, clearances, hit outs, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it just wasn't good enough. Yep, and of course the game we're talking about is Port versus Collingwood at the MCG. It was in front of 32,000 people. And again, we lost by just a kick. The fourth time this year, we've lost by around about a, a goal. Uh, it was 10 goals, 10 to 11 goals, 10. Um, Hamish Hartlett with uh, with four goals uh, was the only multiple goal scorer. What, what was the centre clearances? Or was, it was, the stats were ridiculously against us, weren't they? Uh, they were. Yeah. I mean, it, it evened out by the end. Um, yeah. But there was a stage there at half time. It was zero nine in centre clearances. And I think yeah, at half time we were we were twelve twenty four down as well. So we were yeah. just absolutely spanked. I mean, uh, Dane Beams had what eight um, clearances in the first half. He was unstoppable. Yeah. And wasn't he getting the hard tag? 
Well, I wouldn't call it a hard tag, but yeah, Andrew Moore came in and and he had him in that f- first quarter, and he just uh, he just got blown away. Um, and ho- mm. as I said in my review, hopefully that's the end of this experiment of trying to turn Andrew Moore into a tagger because I just don't think he's good enough to do it. And that's not a slight on Andrew Moore. I think he's I think he's going to make a really really good player um, as a Ollie Wine style attacking clearance machine. Um, but I just don't think he's got the concentration um, to lock down a a very, very good player. Who was Kane running with? No one early, and then he went uh, went on to side bottom. So what were your thoughts uh, from the television, mate? Uh, look, from my, my thoughts from the TV, I, I thought one of them was... Um, I thought Loby got smashed, and I don't believe the stats that are coming out there um, from the paper. Uh, his influence at the centre square, I thought, was negligible and wits was over the top of him, especially in the first half. Um, so, uh, which was a bit disappointing. Um, and he, but I mean, at least he sort of had a bit more influence, uh, you know, kick behind the play. Um, the other thing uh, was, I feel like we are lacking a little bit of confidence now. And it, to me, it seems like there was too many times players uh, aren't using the first instinct. They, they could have taken a kick uh, and instead chose to, to handball to a flat-footed teammate that was hot with someone right on them. And, and to me, from TV, it just sort of looked like a reflection that the player was actually too too scared to actually take the kick or take the play themselves and were trying to move it on to the next teammate. So, um, And obviously that exposed us with too many handballs. I mean, how many times did we just go too far with that, ha- uh, that handball chain? A number of times, yeah. It, it got to the point of being ridiculous a few times there. I even shrieked out, just kick it! Like a one of those annoying middle-aged women that you always seem yeah. to sit behind at the footy. But um, it got to that point a few times where, and I said it in my review as well, you note sort of before the game in the pre-game warm-up where they do this warm-up um, handball drill where they sort of they force each other to handball uh, through traffic. So it's always going inside so you can hit those pinpoint passes. I think we are pretty good at hitting those pinpoint passes. It's just, I think, sometimes subconsciously we just don't know when to break away from doing the handball and actually kick it forward or get it free. You know, a number of times we seem to get it free and then a player will inexplicably handball it back inside again. You think, what are you doing? Why have you done that? Yeah. Just run yeah. away with the ball. You're free. You're in space. But they mm. just seem to subconsciously just go for the, for another handball again. And it happened probably yeah. five or six times, and it costs us every time. And I think that's what I'm going to get into. I think we're, we're now lacking that bit of confidence. And in the first 10 rounds, that player was just taking the kick and taking the game on. And now that we're reverting to, you know what, maybe I don't want to take it and I'll give it to that guy. The other one was Cam O'Shea. Um, I, thought he was, he took, I thought he did well, but I thought also he took too much time with the ball. And there was numerous times it, he had a, a free player and the commentary brought up, not just with him, with other players, we had we had a long direct kick free and we just weren't doing it. And my last pet hate from TV was the amount of stationary forward targets that we tried to deliver the ball to and just did high bombs on top of their head. The amount of, I think it was like six times we had passes punched over the line from yeah. inside the goal square to a stationary target. You know, and it was just, I wanted to pull my hair out. I think I left the room a couple of times. I was so frustrated. <laughs> Go back and take your kick, boys. God's sake. Yeah. There was a couple of times where it was only they were only 20 metres out on a bit of an angle and they were trying to pinpoint this long, loopy kick um, into the square. Now, Kevin, you were at the game, mate. What, are, what were your thoughts? Uh, it, was, it was frustrating. I mean, I, we were talking about delivering the ball. I thought we we were handballing, but we seemed to take one extra handball. Yep. So I don't know whether it was, there wasn't somewhere to kick it to or we just... I don't know, lack confidence in something, but we seem to be always have a th- have three handball run when we could have had two. Yep. And one other thing is a number of times I yelled out, someone get on Harry O. Yeah. <laughs> we, left their, we left their plus one free to mop up all the time. We were getting absolutely spanked in the midfield, and the only way that we can fat is by throwing more numbers in and around that ball at the stoppages. And then winning it, winning the ball because we've got more numbers down there. Now those numbers have to come from somewhere. We know that we like to play a plus one in defence, so they're not going to come from there. 
So unfortunately, as a consequence, we've got to lose players from the forward line to throw them in, into the midfield so that we can mm-hmm. actually win the ball. And then when we do actually win the ball, we've got no one to kick it to. That's the problem. Yeah, I guess we got we've got some experienced mids, but we're still lacking that depth in the mid. And I think I think our early form has created a bit of a, a disillusion with uh, our supporters because one of my queries was our depth at the beginning of the year, and uh, we've got some great players, but they're also young, and uh, you know, and that's going to take time, and that's what we're getting a little bit exposed to now. So the the Ollie Wines, the Chad Wingards, the, the Jared Polix uh, that are running through the midfield, you know, they're, we're getting a bit exposed there. Uh, maybe Broadbent's, what, 24 now. Maybe um, maybe it's time to maybe push him into more of the midfield rotations a little bit more often uh, just to get that his bigger body and a bit more um, footy experience into the uh, into that midfield rotation at the, this point in time when we need it. I thought our defence, considering we had... Um... You know, so many clear clearances um, coming into that defensive 50. I thought they held up pretty strong. I mean, Broadbent and O'Shea were excellent. I know everyone has sort of blasted Jasper Pittard's game, but I thought he was pretty good as well. Um, And Homsch did a fantastic job on Reed. And I thought, even though Carlisle was beaten by Cloak, I thought one-on-one he competed pretty well. Yeah, look, I mean, our defence has um, uh, been pretty strong this whole time while we've been out without our two key defenders. But, again, part of that, I think, comes down to also our game plan of not wanting to lose more than playing to win. So we've been a bit more conservative with our game plan and uh, with especially with our defensive transition and going so deep with so many players. Um, so uh, that's probably helped our defensive unit overall. What were some of the other issues that you saw um, out there on the weekend, mate? Well, I thought they put a lot of effort in the Jasper Pittard. Um, I, I really think they identified his run from defence and so really made an effort to try and cut that out. It's just strange. Our, our forward structure has just become non-existent. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I'm at a loss um, to know why. It's, it's almost like if we don't win a centre clearance, um, we don't seem to have a game plan at the moment where outside of a centre clearance where we look like we're going to have a structure up forward where we're going to kick a goal. No, it's very true. As I said, I think we're throwing too many players um, through the midfield and that's really costing us up forward where we just don't have anything resembling a, a traditional forward structure. I mean, our, our tall forwards are having to go, you know, up up to centre-half forward and up to the wings. You know, we're throwing guys like Wingard, Gray and Monfries um, around the bowl. And so many times, again, you know, you look up and you've got no one to kick to. So what do you do with the bowl? Mm. Because West Stuff's not down there. He played all right, but he was everywhere, taking marks in the back line and in the middle. He had a good game, West Stuff. Yeah. I thought that was probably his best game for outside the first month of the yeah. season. No, he, took some, he took some good marks. He did. Yeah, I thought yeah. West Stuff had, well. had a great game. Uh, one of the, that mark where he got bumped early and then got bumped by the other player, sort of bumped him back in the position and he took a massively strong mark, was very in, uh, very impressive. Yep. Uh, I guess the, the big elephant in the room and, and conversation that's been on the board and the man's got his own own thread dedicated to himself as well is um, the loss of uh, Trengove. Um, you know, I think you know, obviously if he was playing, I reckon we would have won. Simple as that. And uh, it's not as much just because we would have won as because uh, he would have been at centre-half back. I think at the moment where we're missing him is uh, the chop-out that he gives Levy and uh, the different dynamic yep. that he actually creates for us in the centre square. So, um, you know, in the first half when Lobie was getting dominated by Wits in the centre square, um, you know, Jackson's extra leap, uh, jumping into the player a bit more vigorously, would have given us a different dimension and probably helped us with trying to get a few few more centre clearances. And we've, we've really been lacking that since he's been gone. No doubt. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think we've really missed him from the back line um, as much as people think, but it's certainly his ability to control the play through the midfield um, as that sort of on-field leader through there and his ruck work. I mean, we just lacked that second ruck mm-hmm. to be able to get hands on the ball because Westhoff tries his heart out, um, but he just can't seem to... He just doesn't have that leap to get his hands on the ball, um, whereas Trengove does have that leap. And we, we know how influential he can be um, in that role. Um, and that's definitely what we've missed in the last few weeks, especially. Well, what did you what did you guys think at the game? Did you think um, 
Um, you know, I think the stats are misleading for Labor. Did you guys think that he was beaten by, by wits in the overall game? Oh, absolutely. I thought he got smashed. And, you know, is it is it Loby? Is it the midfielders? I mean, it's probably a bit of both. Well, they're a unit. I mean, we've got to set up better at the stoppages. I mean, it's clear that even when Loby does win taps, um, they often go straight down the throat of, of an opponent. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe they don't set up right. I don't know whether... Because a few times it looked like Loby was trying to tap to our guys, but they weren't there. Yeah. Is that where they're, where they're supposed to be there? Or did the Collingwood guys just... Read us better. And what about uh, what about Chad Wingard? Is anyone concerned um, about Chad's form at the moment? Oh, it's definitely a concern. He's just in a bit of a rut, and he's just got to work hard to get him out of it. I mean, is he playing injured? It's quite possible that he's suffering um, from his ankle injury from earlier in the year, um, or is he just struggling with uh, with the more exposure? And all he needs is just that one game where it clicks again, uh, where he. He lands sort of two or three goals, has 20 touches, and he'll go bang again. Yeah. And I think it'll happen before the end of the oh, year. Look, of course, he's a quality player. I mean, he's going to be a superstar. And I think people are just being a little bit impatient, I guess, with, with a few of our young boys because, uh, you know, call, calls to drop him, uh, no offence to the people that are asking for it, it's probably a little bit over the top. Uh, he's too good a player to drop. You know, I mean, he's still influencing the game in some form and he's commanding a very yeah. highly skilled player to stand against him. So, And who are we going to bring in uh, to replace him? I, I feel sorry for the person that did come in. For example, let's say it was Jake Need. Um, at this point in time, Jake Need's nowhere near uh, the calibre of, um, of uh, Chad and <laughs> he'd get crucified if he had a performance a little bit under that, which he probably would. So... Um, yep. Yeah, and the, uh, I think the other rumour about you know him being disinterested in the game and going to walk away in a couple. Of- oh, I think that's a load yeah, of crap. I think so, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I think so too. He's, uh, you know, the, the young guy's got so much potential ahead of him. He's just having a bit of a run, as all young players do. I mean, he just turned twenty, didn't he? So mm. we just need a bit of patience, I guess. The, the probably the the real disappointment for me was probably Paul Stewart and his lack of influence in the game. Yeah. We really needed him to stand up and kick a couple of goals again like he did last week, but yeah. I don't know, he's, he's just not getting into it at the moment. No. Well, you guys were at the game. What, what happened? What was he doing? Well, at one stage, he was, uh, he was the full forward, wasn't he? Because Cheek was off. Yeah. Was he even near the play, though? No. 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 He, was, uh, he was struggling. Yeah. yeah. What about that? Know. It was just one of those sort of bad games where you just can't get near it, but... No, well, I mean, even having Robbie Gray up forward as well. You know, I mean, Chad, Gus, Robbie Gray, all up forward. And, you know, they're three potent small forwards. But, again, as Macca said, our delivery into the forward lines is, has really been woeful in our forward structure. So, um, you know, when you've got guys that are just six foot tall or below and they're getting delivery with the ball on the head, what what chance do they have? No, that's right. They haven't been so close. <laughs> Very good question. Well... Again, it's that defensive game plan, as far as I'm concerned. We're too, we're too defensive. I mean, that, that's the problem. As I said in, at the start, you know, we've lost four games now by a kick. Um, and we were, what, five goals up against the Crows and lost that one as well. So we've been competitive in just about every single game except for probably the Richmond yeah. one this year. Mm. We are so close to, to getting the job done. Um, all we need is an extra 5% and we'll be getting the job done. Because well, Collingwood played bloody well. They dominated the midfield, and they still only won by. A You're kick. adamant, Macca, that we're we're short, too short. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think we'll be I will be attacking tolls in the off season. I think, um, and even then, you know, guys like Shaw will come good next year. Um, hopefully, Butcher will be on the list and come good as well. Redden will hopefully be back. We'll have a lot more options next year. Yeah. Well, look, who are your best players, mate? Oh, well, I uh, yeah. I'd probably have uh, Hamish best on ground for his four four goals. Um, yeah, I, I thought he had a pretty good effort throughout the game, and I thought his hardness that contest where he uh, tried to chop out Ben Reed, fantastic, courageous effort, you know. Yeah. Where, and that's what I wanted to see. And then, like you said, I just want Hamish to to do more of that, influence the game more often. If only he had the ball accumulation ability of Nathan Buckley, we'd, we'd have Nathan Buckley. It'd be great. Pretty um, much. Yeah. I put Westy second best on ground. I thought it was his best game uh, for quite a while and uh, was very influential. And I was really impressed with some of his marking. 
And um, yeah, I thought Brody did all right too. I thought I thought the calls were on some some of the posters saying that Brody was uh, not very good was a bit unfair. I thought that was probably uh, his best game for for quite a while as well. Probably the last two months, Macca. And um, yep. yeah, and look, I don't know. Travis is obviously up there. He's always trying his guts out and. I'd probably give uh, Jarman probably a vote too because I thought he at least he tried to run and carry and he might not have executed yep. all the time. But you know what? At least he was bloody giving it a red hot go. Every time he got that ball, he tried to run and he tried to run fast and try and create something. Yep. No, good call. Kevin, what about you, mate? I, was, I think I've read your notes, Rick. Uh, I had Hamish as best. I said those, those goals he can kick if he can, like I said, get... Get some more of them. He's he's deadly from outside fifty, for sure. Uh, I spoke before about about West off taking marks and being in the play. I had him as second, and uh, I like Deshaies' game and Homsch. No, I agree with him. I had Brody Bess on ground. Um, so yeah, I thought he played a fantastic game. He, I thought he really controlled the back line really well. Um, gave us lots of run, lots of carry. Um, Hammer was second best on ground. Those four goals were absolutely fantastic. We just need to see more of that. Um, Cam O'Shea, again, he's probably been our form player since he came back in against Essen, and he hasn't really put a foot wrong um, in that time. Um, Jackie Homsch just killed Ben Reid, and Travis Boat, the captain, um, was just about the only midfielder really trying to hunt those clearances when we were getting done. I guess the only other thing to, to point out to you was how the hell did they bloody... Um... Keep getting a guy free, dead out in front of goals, 40 metres out. About five times. And, uh, yeah. I was doing my nana. Hard running. You could see it happening. Yeah. You could see it happening. Yeah. And, you know, we were just out of position and, um, you know, it was just hard running. They just ran. And, and it wasn't just one play. You know, they had two or three options yeah. a lot of times to kick to in that situation. Yeah. The players like that were favourite us. I was say players like Elliot just charged into those, those gaps and made a contest or got to the ball. That's it. Well, look, let's talk about another loss, uh, which was uh, the SNFL game against South Adelaide on Saturday. Uh, it was a 17-point loss. Um, we lost 8 goals 6 to 10 goals 11. Uh, Jakey Need is in fantastic form with another 3 goals. Absolutely, and good on him. It's what we wanted, wasn't it? You know, and uh, he was that. He seemed to be that timid little boy uh, at the start of the year, f- carrying on from last year. But he's really starting to come out of his shell now. So, um, you know, it's great to see. And you know, he cre- created us a lot of excitement last year. And yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing him back in our side, uh, the senior side, once again, quite quite soon. Well, there's a couple of lots of threes he's had now, isn't he, the last few weeks? Yeah, yeah, he's kicking some goals with some uh, consistency, which is great to see. Um, you know, it really wasn't a great start. We were down by 19 points at quarter time. <clears throat> and we came down from sort of 34, uh, 34 points down um, at three-quarter time, but we just left our run too late. We fell short by 17 points. Um, it was probably the youngest team we've played all year. There was only nine AFL-listed players out there. And there were five who haven't actually played an AFL game um, yet, uh, so it was a very, very young squad that we played on the weekend. We were leave, we left a lot of they lost a lot of clearance winners this week. The Maggies didn't they? Yeah, it was unfortunate. I mean, you know, with Mitchell going over, Amon going over, they both been in fantastic form. Um, Newton in the side, Youngy um, unfit. Um, as you said, yeah, we lost a little bit in that midfield. Sammy Gray had a fantastic game. He had 29 touches, and Tommy Logan was probably best on ground. Um, he had 26 touches and 12 marks as well. Um, Danny Butcher, he played probably his best game of SA NFL footy, and I really liked what Ben Sawford did as well. Yeah, I was. Uh, I guess I'm keen. I'm, I'm glad to see um, Tom Logan back it up. I thought he was a bit unlucky. I thought he might have come back in. I felt I thought they might have dropped him to let Cassisi play, play his last game, and and then Tommy'd come back in the side because he didn't play poorly at all when he played for us in the in the seniors. So it's good to see that he just took it on the chin and uh, knows what his role is and backed it up. 
Mm. Yeah. I guess in the end, um, Carlisle came in for Cassisi and Jonas probably took over uh, Cassisi's role. Yeah. So what about uh, the big big boys? How did uh, how did Shaw and uh, Harvey go? Well, Shaw was pretty consistent. 11 touches, 6 marks and a goal. Harvey uh, struggled on the day. He only had the one kick. Um, Sam Gordon played his first game of SANFL footy. So where does that leave us? Where does it leave the Maggies? Is it a, is it a bit disappointing that we lost or to be expected with the number of... I don't think so. I, th- I mean, South are a pretty good team this year and with the number of players that we had out, um, unless there's going to be some drastic injury issues for the rest of the season, I don't think we're going to have um, too many games like that for the rest of the mm. year. Well, we, just need- so we had more out as well. He came up to the AFL side. Last yeah, field right. as well as the others we mentioned. Hey, well, if you were Sydney, would you rather be playing Port in fourth spot at the moment or would you rather be playing Frio? Probably Port because I think Frio is still building <clears throat> and I think we're absolutely cooked um, for the end of the year. But mm. I guess we'll wait and see. You never know. You never know. You never know. I'll save it for the game. Yeah. I don't get it, mate. It's a to me. It's come down to a two-horse race again. I think it'll be between Sydney and Hawthorne, to be honest. Well, it's looking that way now. So we've got Wacko Jacko on on Thursday night. Bring it on! Yeah. He's back. I've, I've told him he's he's got to join us in the the tough question segment this week. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, boys. We might leave it there Pleasure. for now. Uh, thank- Kevin, thanks for coming thanks on, for mate. Me. I dropped out a few times and you didn't even know that, but that's all right. <laughs> no, that's because Mac had just pulled my string and I just started talking. <laughs> that's I'll, it. Be right. I'll, be, I'll meet up with you somewhere on the weekend. All right, boys. All right. Go to the power. Right. Spears and inside 50. Schultz comes hard. Flicks it out. Both get to be appropriate. The captain. That is gold class. Leadership agrees with Travis Boat. He's better than ever.